You and I all want the same thing. We want to be happy. Given this human preoccupation with the pursuit of happiness, it seems unlikely that people would deliberately seek out things that they know will make them sad. And yet we do. I wonder how many of you have ever been to the cinema to see a film that you've heard described as a tearjerker, or watched a favourite movie that you've cried in before, watched it again knowing that you're going to cry again. If there are aliens observing human behaviour from outer space, this would have to seem bizarre. And yet not only do humans engage in this behaviour, we enjoy it. This is a paradox that has puzzled philosophers for centuries. Aristotle called it the paradox of tragedy. And when we consider music, the mystery only deepens because there's, there are generally no characters or storylines with which we might relate. So my research addresses the interesting question, why do people listen to sad music? While philosophers have discussed this question for many years, my research is one of the first to conduct an empirical investigation into the topic and to consider the role of individual personality differences. In a series of three studies, I tested over 200 people and discovered that there seems to be a correlation between the personality traits of absorption and music empathy and a liking for sad music. At the same time, people may enjoy other psychological benefits from listening to sad music, such as the opportunity to purge themselves of their own negative emotions or to process and make sense of events in their own life. On the other hand, people with mood disorders have impaired capacities to regulate their own moods and emotions. They may also have an attentional bias towards negative stimuli meaning that they find themselves attracted to this sad music despite the fact that it only perpetuates their feelings of sadness and they may derive little psychological benefit from it. So my research can help us not only address a fascinating philosophical question, but it can help us to better understand human emotion, the function of music in society, and the potential that there is for music to help people with mood disorders. So next time you have that favourite tragic love song on repeat on your iPod and you're listening to it over and over again, you may want to ask yourself if you're benefiting from that. Am I making myself feel worse or am I one of the fortunate people who can actually enjoy and benefit from listening to sad music? Thank you.